there, it would it would be a great help to accessibility to to have more standardization in in macros let me put another importance of standard latex mathematics which is uh, I, I came across i think through the blind math list um, a piece of software called well it's an online service called MathPix. And if you know Infinity Reader, it does that sort of thing, but it seems to be a better version built after the age of machine learning and artificial intelligence. And it seems to be pretty good even with handwritten stuff. So, but whether it's MathJack, whether it's MathPix or Infinity Reader, any system that produces LaTeX, LaTeX mathematics, should be encouraged to produce standard LaTeX mathematics. Um, we have we, we have standards for electricity so that I can plug my socket, my light, my light bulb into the socket and nothing blows up. And we'd like to have standards for our electronic systems similar to ASCII that will work for mathematics. Uh, so maybe we get an error message and the thing stops because of an out of range condition but we don't want things to just blow up and if we're doing all this automated process we need standard latex mathematics and MathPix is potentially one of the people that would want to generate standard latex mathematics and there might be multiple versions of it just as there are multiple versions of electricity it comes in all sorts of voltages and it also comes in all sorts of sort of purity. And you have very pure electricity and you have rough electricity and you have universal power supplies to solve. And uh, I'm trying to get my bearings in this conversation. Um, I'm wondering if uh, one's notion of standard math, uh, standard LaTeX, uh, has to do with putting the semantics of the math into the tech markup, the LaTeX markup. Uh, from from uh, Rob's example, I guess it was Rob with three different uses of the the the, the X. <laughs> um, and uh, it seems like what's what's absent was semantics. But am I looking in the wrong direction, Jonathan? You were talking about standard LaTeX markup. Uh, okay, I, th I, I, I think that the problem with standards is you have too many of them. <laughs> There's jokes about that too. Um, what I have in my mind is sort of a, a really low level thing is is that when tech types gets things it turns the, the thing into a math list and one ought to be able to prov provide standard markup that produces the math list for every math list that's admissible you should have a standard way of writing it down in later this goes back to the things that you were saying last week arthur that Leslie Lamport said, you must put your subscripts, even if it's just the number one, in curly braces. Uh, so you don't, to, to go back to what Rob was saying, you don't get um, A sub 10 when it's really A sub one times zero. Uh, we've got a late arrival. Um, so, so that's the, the very lowest level of it, that anything that goes into a math list has a standard LaTeX representation, and it, that process should provide a normalization. So if the, if, the, if the representation is the same, the math list is the same. If the representations are different, the math lists are different. And if you're going to put semantics into your mathematics, then one would expect that to carry through to the math list because somehow you'd like it to carry through into the PDF or the web page or wherever the math list is being displayed. So in MathML, you have presentational markup and semantic markup. 
And for mathematics, you probably want something a bit equivalent. It, the, ho the whole issue is, is somewhat notorious because you have things like an analyst using round brackets and square brackets for half open intervals. And the people observe, ab abuse notation all over the place. I know I do. Um, the way to really get semantic markup is to input the mathematics into a semantic system. And if you're doing that, then you're starting to talk about interactions with true persistence. That's the modern thing. And one of my sort of standard jokes here is that tech was written so you could write mathematical proofs. And we've got to watch it because people are now writing mathematical proofs, not for human beings to read, but for computers to read. So there's a big, big interest now in research mathematicians in um, what are called proof assistants, such as Koch and Lean. And those things have to be mathematized if tech is going to have its full role in, the, in this century. I'll stop. <laughs> I'm a reminder. Awesome. Here. Uh, could I ask a question of Arthur? Uh, Arthur, you go back a long ways in uh, dealing with uh, macro support for physics, uh, because RevTech is widely used for many physics journals. Uh, when you first began to work with the physical societies on this, was there any uh, thought given to standardizing notation as we have this example of three different uses of times and so on? or or are they just trying to get uh, the journals published in a format similar to what they were doing before and they were thinking only of a printed form? Yeah, it's more the latter, uh, Nelson. Thanks for asking. Um, and uh, there are relatively few macros that come with RevTech that facilitate doing the math. It's, it's still possible for uh, someone to author a paper with RevTech where the math is very, very badly marked up. So I can't be authoritative about this because there, there is someone who's actually in charge of RevTech. I was the vendor. So I can describe my own experience, uh, that's all. 